first hand camera. Yeah, if you notice a little echo, we had a power outage here the other day and it's kind of messed with the PA system and we're waiting on some folks to uh, take care of that for us at Monday, you know? So I will call this April the 15th, 2024 meeting to order. And I apologize again, we're a little, a little bit late, 7.07. So first, we're going to have our invocation and pledge of allegiance, pledge of allegiance by Commissioner Sue Hinman, and I believe he has got Reverend Anderson. Yes, Reverend Anderson, if you come forward to do the uh, invocation for us. Yeah, we're great. We have created all mankind. You come with your song. You have created each and every one of us in your image and in your life. We pray now that your grace and mercy continue to spread among this all the time in doing due diligence in the office which your people have placed them into. This is your service prayer for all of Grand Town. I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Am I ready? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Anderson, for the invocation, and Commissioner Hemmen for your pledge of allegiance. On our consent agenda board, you will note um, that the National Therapy. Animal Day proclamation. We're not going to be reading that out because we're unable to have someone come. With, it's an important thing. Um, therapy animals and are incredibly important. Our some of our folks. And the other item on the minutes. Um, there's a correction on page 44. Um, it says northern in paragraph four. At the bottom of the page, it should say southern. So other than that, uh, board, you've had an opportunity to review the consent agenda. Is there any other um, additions or corrections? Being none of your motion to accept the consent agenda. Move and we accept the consent agenda. Second. And motion by Commissioner Rob Wilford, seconded by Commissioner May. Is there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign? Motion carries. Next, we've got introductions, recognition, and presentation. Uh, we've got the first introduction of our new grant writer, um, <coughs> Jamie Axon. <laughs> Chair Aaron, board commissioners, uh, pleased to uh, present to you tonight. Uh, Jamie Oxenheim, who was selected to serve as Granville County's first grant winner, and worked two weeks ago on April 1st. Uh, Jamie brings 13 years of grant writing experience to the role, both as a grant consultant and as a grant administrator, executive director of the Paulus County Office of the and the executive director of the Alliance of Long Liberty. Uh, he has experience with federal, state, and private foundation grants from agencies like the U.S. Department of Health and Urban Development, U.S. Department of Treasury, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation, and the National Endowment. Uh, I was driving out of his experience as an educator working with uh, high universities, all this university of Virginia, and the Blue Shield Foundation. Thank you very much. Originally, the great Henry of Scotland, some border, everyone born and raised there, and the school at the University of Pennsylvania, and the University of Pennsylvania State University, and taught in the school, high school, and Well, welcome. I'm excited for you to be here. We've got uh, 
lots and lots of things that we're uh, hoping that you will like uh, key in on and bring some uh, revenue back to Granville County. So we're excited. Any other commissioners? If the county manager could explain uh, how this cost is shared and the purpose of, of this position. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner May. Yes, uh, so this position, which um, we recognized for a while that we needed and, and was, uh, took a while to recruit the right person into the position, so we're happy to have Mr. Hudson down here. But this is a, a position that we're sharing 50 50, both time and, and effort and cost with the town of Green Sea. And Mr. Hudson, welcome. Thank you. Look forward to uh, actually meet you one on one and getting to know you better. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. This is for us for the early events today. Town one and a law enforcement and I'm saying to stay here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I again, I apologize. Uh, I mean, uh, it has that screech in your ear on the, the mic system. Over can I get that corrected? So next we've got a uh, proclamation for uh, child abuse uh, prevention month, and we're going to handle that with our um, ESS award with uh, Dr. Dr. Commissioner Tony Kozart and Commissioner Susan. Last week, we talked about children but they are every single day. And every single day, we get to and make our baby safe and so that we don't have to call the care every day. So, I'm going to let Mr. Kilogram do this. Uh, proclamation of Thank you. Thank you. Proclamation recognizes child abuse. Where children are our state's most vulnerable victims, other child states' most valuable resources, helping to take abuse of all the time. And where children stop with trauma. Can have long term psychological, emotional, and physical effects throughout the individual's lifetime and impact future generations of Whereas childhood trauma, including abuse and neglect, is a serious problem that guiding solutions require input and action from everyone. And whereas children who live with families with access to care are less likely to experience abuse and neglect, and where it's very in possible because of the partnership created between families, prevention advocates, child welfare education, education, health, community, and faith based organizations, businesses, law enforcement agencies, local, state, and national government. And whereas we acknowledge that in the of the new people, we must work together to change hearts and respect through storytelling, sharing, simple beliefs, and great young lives, areas, and inspire action from expected and unexpected causes. And whereas we are committed to advancing equitable, responsive, and effective change. That ensure all children and families are healthy and strive. And whereas we recognize the need to prioritize care and invest in more prevention initiatives like home visits and family policies, economic support, and community based child abuse prevention programs at the national, state, and local level. Now, therefore, the Grammar County Board of Commission does hereby proclaim the April. As Child Abuse Prevention Month in Granville County, and there is an opportunity to recognize this month by building a narrative of hope and fantasy. So, 
collaboration and the creation of an exit system of primary prevention that does not currently exist in this country. This fiction shares page with one of them, and she says, that is our special. We have to come up with a proclamation like this to try to protect our babies. You know? But this is one of the things I pray every night that we just don't have to do the harm. So thank you, thank you for what you do and how you do it and how you keep our babies safe. You know that sometimes they can't even find a place to put babies. And I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to them. And they have to stay with us. Have a home from work and have to lift the baby from his bed and lose all day or doesn't understand what's going on. And it's very Um, I really do appreciate your commitment to not just the dead and staff of our community to protecting our children, but all of our children deserve to have a safe, healthy livelihood and lifestyle. Um, you know, we are we are very blessed and fortunate, I mean, fortunate um, but our kids that we see and that we investigate and really face every abuse, physically, sexually, um, emotionally, mentally, neglected, abandoned. We are actually going out to these homes. They can be parents of privacy, but we're also trying to protect these schools, interviewing them at school, interviewing them at the home. Um, our staff work 24 7 to ensure that our kids are protected. So, um, again, I just want to remind you all that on April 16th is National Advocacy Day. So, contact your congressman, contact your local senator, representative. That's the day that everybody should advocate for. Um, preventing child abuse, but also advocate for providing additional funding from the state to the county to assist in prevention and family preservation programs. Because unfortunately, this program, child welfare, is one of the that is funded by the state and federal government. And most, a lot, most of our children now are going to see child abuse because of the lack of funding that we have. I urge you to do the national advocacy um, to your local representative congress. Um, Sarah, <laughs> I just thought for a second. Uh, Sarah, could you make sure that the, those numbers are placed on our website so that we know where to get that number to call? Because this is very, very important that we all call to make this commitment to help try to keep our babies So thank you. 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 Thank you very much for that presentation and for the DSS folks, Mr. Tucson and your staff, everything you do for our community. Thank you very much. So next we'll hear an update from our uh, Granville County Service Senior Services Advisory Board. We've got uh, the chairman of that advisory board, uh, Sheriff David Smith uh, here. He will present the, uh, um, <clears throat> the, the uh, update for that, that, uh, that board. We also have uh, our director, Kathy May, along with them as well. Never know what to call you there, Sheriff David. Back chair. Mission. Commissioner. I'm telling Miss Kathy, sure, Miss Bill, I'm going to die there. I need 
about lunchtime, we've got two that so I'll stop seeing. And as we know, basically, it's one team that builds this pipe, and it was a few years old, it was lined up, and you know, it's kind of like a state, it's really packed, and it was lunchtime. And again, I'll uh, say that in just a few minutes, and, and you have for those things that are required, they also send out heartfelt thank you for the project moving forward to it. If you can take on that, our people is paid up to the South and West, and we do have one problem here, Reverend Brother Ramsey, and you set out prior to thank you for being here, Reverend Ramsey, but we did have some. Chairman Smith, you, yeah. you've got Miss Morton up in the back as well. Miss Morton. And, 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 and the one I'm getting ready to point is right behind her. Cynthia Griffin's up there, too. You've got a couple of your board members. You've got a couple of, of your other board members. I just wanted to make sure that we, we uh, recognize. Oh, oh, I apologize. Okay. Thank you. I, I, my bad. Well, I am getting ready to appoint Cynthia yes. Griffin a little bit later in the meeting. So she's back there in the corner. I had the wrong Ms. Morton. Apologize. She is on board. I know. I had the wrong one. We do next, uh, we know we are in volunteer appreciation of the week of month. So next, uh, it's going to be speed up the big security. It's closing for their volunteer appreciation of five o'clock. This year, some of you may remember, a year ago, uh, they did in conjunction with the Republican uh, Pension Act, aiding the Senate. You can go to the Johnson County team, not this one, this county. Volunteering and pushing out things to get it up in the Baptist Church. This year, we be held this on the 21st. Find another church in Los Angeles. And the third item, this is the primary answer to this. As we said, the commissioners will know you go to the last nine that will be coming up in September 18th about possibly here at the edge of it. And as you all know, I don't know who enjoys the most, the nine is plus. <laughs> They are caregivers for our county commission. We do it We do everyone to take part in that. So I did want to share that with you. And to, to be a uh, representative, you have to be 50 years on four days. And I want to say, also the thank most of Goose, Commissioner Goose, he is our liaison for our senior coming. Uh, we all know that as we go through, and you can next. Uh, we are a founding board follows the record. And we have photos in the week of being, and we go through the agenda. And uh, I think that we said the church will not possibly give community focus on the old stuff. And I just want to share with you that for senior son of an artist, he is a son of Edison, authorized by the state. I was there last week getting all this information and the Charlotte people filed a ship for one of our ship coordinators. And by the way, we got payments about $40,000. People are going to take more advantage of that. So, but you can't get with the oldest part about two foot wide and the top and bottom just full of paints where you have to do an in-depth book about three inches thick that you have to make it fun. Be a son of that, and that is, is very few of those who can say that's kind of outstanding to do that. Of course, our priority is all things. We have one staff, and all three of our members took place. Uh, the staff members will go beyond the call of duty. Uh, maybe as I know, you're going to send us some years. I'm going to go, and I am thankful. And when I was going in, she was coming out. I guess that's a lot of attributes to different things. So, you can see it was kind of yes, 93 years old, still drive up here for things. And she said, I'll do it with Paul. He keeps me home. And one other short time, I'll give these things. So, 
17 year old male. He's had a, he lived alone, he had a struggle. His wife died about six months ago. He went to Alice's, he had to walk him, but he believed in coming to the park so that's bring him on the boat crash to take the head. They have him in the They have him in the And uh, he comes regularly Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I talked to him, I see him in Monday. And he said, you know, said I enjoyed going there those three days. Because he, first of all, gives me me. Secondly, it gives me social interaction of people that are coming. And so I just want to give you those two testimonies we can go on. But, you know, one of our previous and recent focus areas of our community, and of course, the community that Parkinson is now in North Carolina, seen this thing, the same thing full time. Uh, Ms. Gooch, I think you may have had every meeting Parkinson to share what he could share with us. Thank you. That and go volunteer. Volunteer number. That is a challenge. A home delivered me. We thank those people that do volunteer. And as you know, we said it's hot deal, but that may be some of them don't want to be the home to get it in the back. We do contract that out to the government health system, address the our issue, and that is one of the things we always talk about that and how to be committed. Decided and Mr. Chappie has decided we are going to go there and have lunch one day. Have lunch like what we do with other ones. We do that. We look forward to doing that. And then I've seen in some of the programs, uh, if you notice that I've created life arrangements, and I understand that I can't imagine maybe anticipate participating in one of those programs. There's a German speaking. Are you old enough? And I hope that some of the I'm going to my next meeting that we can as a doctor for the tribal man to our single down the side and have a tour to take a look down at us. And again, we've already talked about increasing our home delivery. We are all constantly looking for people to do that. That is the need, so we hope that will be. And then, of course, our innovative changes in the program. We look forward to uh, continuing those programs that are wise and interested. And one of the things that we do that Captain and Eddie can start to discuss is the Rocky Boston while Parkinson's people that have Parkinson's that keep those muscles. You know, it's just so many programs that, that are out there that we have. And one last thing I want to bring is our senior connection. Monthly news, like a newsletter, but it gives all the information of what's going on. Uh, Ms. Kathy has a monthly meeting, great coffee. She goes to Sacramento, to stay in office, so on, and just sit down visiting. And, and we do have feedback. We do have feedback. It's all Information here is always give uh, what the thing is uh, what we can do. And then it gives out the, the, the meals that are being given and how many people are coming and, and eating and how many they are sitting out in the home. But it's very informative, very informative thing called senior connection. Very informative. Yeah, I think we can do this. And I think that we don't have any questions. We got an account today. You like to answer anything y'all want to know. Thank you again for being here. I don't have a question, Mr. Yes, sir. But I'd just like to make a comment. Yes. Um, it was a, just been a commissioner for a few months, and um, Commissioner May called me this afternoon. He doesn't remember it, but I did. And he said, uh, what are you doing today? And I said, I'm not doing anything really. He says, well, I'm not going to make it, but they have a nifty 50 today. He said, you need to, you ought to go. He didn't say you, you got to go, but he said, you ought to go. I said, I'll do that. Nifty. Nine. Nifty. Nine. I'm sorry. Nifty. 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 My point being, I said, I'll, I'll do that. And, and Kathy and I are neighbors. That was the most fun when you said you don't know who enjoyed it more, the seniors 
the staff or the commissioners, it was an absolute ball. Um, we had four or five of us there and we got to escort them in and it was so much fun. And I told Kathy later, I said, I'm coming back to this whether I'm a commissioner or not. <laughs> she said, well, if you live long enough, you'll get this stuff. <laughs> but it was so much fun and I, it, it, it was a great time. It was a casino night. And I think they, they were have they were gambling. <laughs> Emily? If I could, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. So um Miss May, um, I think Miss Southall has brought on a new assistant down south. Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. I have an opportunity to go there quite often and uh, I appreciate the services being provided and uh, I know that Clark's is delivering uh, many folks there as well. Uh, for meals and so forth, I think that people don't um, really understand that a large percentage. Well, let me back up. I don't know how many, uh, but there are a number of folks, both within Creedmoor Partner and the unincorporated part of it, that, uh, that that go there for the daily meals. And uh, in fact, uh, that last there may be enough meal for them for the weekend. So we appreciate those services and the expansion of services and we continue to work on ways that we can grow those services on southern and as well. So thank you. Yeah, we raise that one minor table you tell us about our office. Well, the chair and the day have been doing a little bit of research into our population numbers. And I was kind of surprised when I learned that the um, number of, see, of people between the age of 50 and 59 is is larger in Randall County than anywhere in the state. And the, our 50 plus population actually makes up 41% of our total population for Randall County. And I have to say that it surprised me. Um, I knew that I knew that there were a lot. 60 plus, we were about 26 percent. But when you add the 50 plus, that's what we have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That was it. And again, I thank each and every one of you for, 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 for give our thing. We know that uh, that's a pleasure to all of us and how they carry it down the channel of all these years. We don't have any more questions. I have one request. About 35 years ago, I was saying I did it. And so my bride is at home and I'll say down. I normally would love to study, but you will just excuse me, I'll make it up down the road. Can I hold you for one second? Have a good reason to leave. <laughs> Can I hold you for one second? Sheriff, Commissioner, Chairman Smith, thank you. You you have served our county pretty much your entire life. You've dedicated it to our county. When you were, uh, decided not to run as a commissioner, uh, I was kind of sad because I didn't know if I'd ever get the opportunity to work with you again. And I cherish the time I've worked with you. And then I was excited to hear when you were appointed to the uh, senior services. And I so look forward to spending more time and working with you in the years to come. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman. Thank you for appointing me to this. Yes, sir. Tell Denise we said happy anniversary. Well, before you leave, I just wanted to let you know I'm the one that has the most fun at Nifty 90s because I'm the only female county commissioner, so I get to escort all the guys. <laughs> There's plenty of you guys to escort the girls. All righty. Thank you. Joey, you have a birthday. Our meeting. We've got Mr. Elliot Clark, who's the regional director of community relations for Via Health. And as he's making his way to the podium, I'll tell you a little backstory. Mr. Uh, Mr. Clark, on a uh, Friday after five, at one point of a month ago or so, I had a, a constituent in crisis over her granddaughter who was um, suicidal and was placed as a juvenile. And Mr. Clark not only answered the phone, but spent 30 minutes on the phone with my constituent. And I am forever in your debt for that, sir. So thank you very much. And I appreciate you coming forward tonight. And again, I apologize to the board. This is a last minute walk-in item. Um, 
We've got a letter of support that Mr. Clark is going to talk to us about. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And it's on the screen if the people want to follow along. Thanks again for this opportunity. We called you late notice and walk on item. Uh, we just got permission from the state to be able to uh, talk about this. We uh, are in a silent period uh, as part of the uh, response to an RFP that the state received uh, in February. But very recently, I uh, got permission to go out and talk to counties about what our efforts are and uh, see if we can gather some uh, counties. So, again, uh, thank you. Uh, Elliot Clark is my name, Community Relations Director for Biohealth. Um, before you and up on the screen, um, and, and if it, uh, please forward, uh, and Drew, if you'd like me to, I can read this to you since you don't have it uh, visually in front of you. Uh, but essentially, what this is is a request for a letter of support for us to include our application uh, to be a statewide vendor uh, specialty plan for uh, families involved in foster. Um, very fitting for our month of April uh, to be talking about this. I have to say, um, the two folks that were up here with you guys uh, being honored earlier, and certainly for Seeley, the commissioners, um, personally working with those two folks in particular, uh, Joe, one of the hardest working, heartfelt uh, people I can ever work with around this population. It is, it is never easy, it's never convenient, it's never. Um, Anything that you would expect uh, in being at this line of work, and they just um, you have fantastic leadership and your service here. Um, so, if it uh, if you would uh, humor me uh, a little bit, I will read this uh, through to you, uh, and then take any questions that you may have. Uh, so, the uh, letter of support uh, would read as follows, and it would be addressed to uh, Secretary Kinsey of the Department of Health. Uh, as County Commissioners in Granville County, we recognize that caring for children and youth in foster care is one of the most important functions of government. As such, we applaud the Department's increased resources and attention to this population reflected in the Department of Health and Human Service Children and Family Specialty Plan as a waiver uh, and an RFP. I'm going to extend Granville County support for Via Health and become a statewide administrator for this PFSP, and we'll use that abbreviation. In collaboration with partner health management. Briefly, um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain that. So, within being a statewide vendor, uh, we definitely needed to pursue a partnership with other CEO that we felt had like values and a similar approach to serving this population. Uh, partner health management operates in the um, Western Piedmont, uh, so aligns with our territory uh, throughout the West and within our Virginia bordering counties uh, intersection. Uh, continuing with the letter. Uh, Fly is uh, highly qualified to administer the uh, specialty plan for children and families served by the child welfare system. In more than 50 years, Fly has been a trusted partner in the state's public administration. Fly has served for the state with more than 12 years' experience in administering the Medicaid health plan, covering a full array of mental health substance disorder and intellectual disability services. In the coming months, Five will be demonstrating the behavioral health and IDD tailored plan that includes physical health, pharmacy services, and behavioral health services for its members. Via currently operates in nearly one third of the state and one hundred counties. I uh, understand and understand the needs of our community. Uh, Via's expertise and experience will offer the best support for the complex needs of the population to be served by the PFSP. CFSP members will depend on plan uh, services for supporting and maintaining family systems, preventing entry into foster care, and ensuring permanency of foster care places where necessary. These efforts will require close coordination with the Department of Social Services. Uh, many years ago, by a pioneer on site embedded care management, which we have here in Granville County, growing the assessment with almost all counties that it serves. Embedding staff of local uh, services agencies. Ensures DFS involved youth and their families receive timely and appropriate uh, support and services. VIA has uh, fostered these partnerships through regular meetings with county social service agencies, state child welfare leadership, and its peer LDNCOs to discuss successful challenges and solution oriented options. 
One notable example of bias is single investments in North Carolina and Calvary's with other agencies that involve uh, children and families to services out there. It's been operating here in Clark County and in all of our county. Uh, this launched in March of 2021. The project is an ongoing partnership among BIA, local DSS agencies, providers, and a lived experience advisory council. Resources created through this project include pathways for assessing the clinical needs of children entering custody, cross systems training, and the adventure awaits foster children. BIA is committed and long serving executive team that's developing management services and support on behalf of the people of North Carolina while maintaining quality standards and fiscal responsibility. BIA uh, staff have achieved this success via dedication to members and recipients and extensive state and local partnerships with government agencies, individuals, and families, healthcare providers, and community based organizations. By adhering to best practices and implementing innovative programs to address service gaps, by meets individual and community needs and offers wraparound services and support systems with five that are meaningful. According to the CFSP, the bio will allow North Carolina to build on, build on a solid foundation that counties have built through LMECOs, the legacy of stable and personalized care of their dedicated local providers, who are deeply rooted in the communities that they serve. Expanding bio's work statewide, we utilize those established foundations in 27 counties currently served by bio and families, retaining the local focus and community focus from all here, while allowing the states of other capital to benefit from that through the process. Okay, so this is for allowing me to read that in its entirety uh, for you guys to look at the record. Um, a, a brief uh, statement of perspective uh, of where the state stands right now as far as this specialty health plan. Uh, you have BIA as an LMEMCO as the sole LMEMCO along with this partnership with partners to apply to this bid. Uh, the bid is open. Uh, we're expecting awards to be announced sometime in August, maybe mid to late August. Uh, but for some perspective, uh, a local public entity, government entity, like BIA, an LMEMCO, will be competing against large commercial insurance plans in this project. So uh, we thought long and hard once the state passed the law to accept the statewide plan and really have invested a lot of resources in, in preparing for it. Um, so we're at a point where uh, we feel like this is gonna be good for the state, it's gonna be good for Grand County, uh, it's gonna be good for this population that requires really special level care and local focus. Thank you for your time. And again, apologies for the late item. Appreciate your grace there. And uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. The board have any questions? I don't have a question, but I'd like to make a motion that we write this letter. Got a motion? I'll second that. And a motion by Commissioner Sue Hinman and seconded by Wilfred that we uh, pen our names to this letter in support of the uh, VIA um, health going for this opportunity. Any discussion on the motion? Purpose of background, Chairman. So, uh, I'm on the regional board for VIA, and just, just for background for our board, uh, one of the conditions for, for this letter was that, in fact, that VIA went and met and, and, and spoke with uh, the DSS director to make sure that they were in line with what this board is supporting. Uh, it should be understood that VIA specializes in rural counties, and they have... Uh, when they're moving toward their specialty plan as they move toward our Taylor plan, which is more holistic health, they met all their benchmarks in doing so. Uh, they are stable, they're sound, uh, they're groundbreaking in their partnerships with local governments. And uh, as on that board, I fully support it and appreciate the motion for this board to accept. Any other comments? Got a motion on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. aye. Any opposed? Like say, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. Simon, we've got our public comments. 
Thank you. We've got two people that have signed up this morning and first we'll hear from uh, John Mackley from STEM. So you'll have three minutes when you come to the podium, if you'll please state your name and address for the record. Unfortunately, I'm here to speak about some of my personal business, and it resolves around the building of my home in this county in the last year, and something that has to do with uh, tree bar home construction, well permits, building permits, well inspections, well drilling and complaints. Um, Neil Graham, the environmental inspector for Granville County, their managers, supervisors for Granville County Environmental. So, just in general, build a home in Granville County, apply and pay for well permits as well as building permits. And I did that pre tree bar home. I had to drill more than one well, unfortunately, out in the same area. <clears throat> they used the southern board drilling, uh, pre drilling. Uh, final inspection and water testing is supposed to be performed by Will Brand, who uh, is also related to the other uh, trade partners and this you know, complete. Uh, well drilling uh, complaint will not find any seals. So uh, this spring, where I started with landscaping, the well that didn't produce water wasn't properly terminated. So I called for a complaint because one, if I if my well goes bad, I will just document it by a reliable source. And uh, I talked to Will and And went in and called and um, said he did not uh, speak to the Southern Well. Um, and I said no, because I want this inspected and I want it investigated by a. And so he, he said, well, let me search your uh, thing and this and that. And he said, well, um, I see here. Oh, I didn't complete the, the final inspection. I said, no, you didn't test my water either like you were saying. And the thing is, I didn't have a choice for to pay for a building permit and a well permit. And by state code, it says that the employees will do certain things to fulfill that permit. So I uh, just want to make that really clear. Um, so, uh, so he said, well, I'm going to check it out. And the next day I called back and no left message. Uh, we all never returned the call. Uh, the day after that, um, I called and I asked to talk to the supervisor, board manager. They never returned the call. Day three, called and left a message for the manager, supervisor, and no one ever returned the call. Day four, left another message. And Call ID if you want to check it. Um, this Mr. Um, Mr. McElroy. Um, so have you been in contact with the county manager at all? Yes, sir. All I know is I didn't get any response from anyone from the county. Yes, sir. So I'm here presenting it to you today. We appreciate you coming forward to this meeting. Um, we've got your sign up information. I think here on the on the we will forward this information to our county manager and he will get with our health department. We appreciate you bringing this forward to us tonight and we will make sure that we get some answers back to you. I appreciate it. Just want to say uh, I worked in state government for 34 years. I'm retired now. I've been back here retired and I really don't want any. I, I keep a really low profile normally. Yes, sir. At the same time, there's obviously a problem because somebody's not returning my phone call. Yes, sir. And it's a, just a very simple little thing. We appreciate you uh, crossing your T's and dotting your I's 
um, forward your information to the county manager and he will get with our health department and we will make sure that we circle back with you. But I would like to say, I would like to have an audit done to this and a full investigation by somebody who has authority to make a disciplinary recommendation. Yes, sir. We'll work on that. Very much for coming this evening. We'll make sure that we get all the information to you. You can give some of your notes to the county manager. Um, he will take care of it. He's going to give you your card and we can circle back on that. Thank you for coming out this evening. Appreciate you coming forward. Welcome to our community. Next, we've got uh, Mr. J, Floyd J from Oxford. Yes, sir, if you'll please state your name and address for the record. Sir, when you come to the podium, if you'll push the little button there to turn the light green. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, sir. My name is Boyd James, Director 7547, NC Highway 90. That's in the I come here for the first briefing and that's a reassessment of that. I know we had the meeting first Monday, but I missed that out since the last year. Last year, my property tax value there, 179000 Round about another. The assessment got my tax value at, I think it's about 525,000. Yeah, now I understand you're from, from the other talking at the assessment meeting, and what they said is going to be lowered by uh, by the, the uh, evaluation, right? In fact, it's not going to be 84 percent, 84 percent to 184. My issue is I, I live in Walnut County. Yeah. Like my mailbox is in, is in Oak Hill Township, and by the corner of my property on the south end, my south end of 96, I go a wall and it's going to land in Knox County. Yeah. So the comparables to my property are not the original comparison. My property, but then if you think about it, uh, if you go up 96 to 41 and, and you turn right, you go to slide down Highway 49 at the next road, you get on there and there's one thing property that's in Grand County. You go past with everything moving from Highway 49 to the next road in, in Grand County. If you go left, you go down 96 West, which is in Virginia, and you get to Cemetery Road. I know there is one piece of property in Grant County that's behind Cemetery Road. Now, you would think that that's the problem, not the first problem, but you, you go to the top and corner, which is behind, behind that uh, Grant, and you got property over there that you got to go to Perkins County, maybe in North County, to get to that property. You can go down on the other side of the lake and you can see on the water lake, but there's a whole lot of deer. You go on the other side of the lake, you have giant mountain, it's probably going to end Grim County. You can go all the way up and down 960, and you got, you got Wake Forest, you got all these people who are in comparison, it's in another area. You know, I understand that y'all have a big problem. I understand that it is going to come that needs to deal with it. I mean, I'm not sure that. I mean, I, don't know that I need to bring that forward to you and make you aware that this is a very serious problem. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. I have you. No, sir. Thank you very much for coming tonight. I hope you had the opportunity to speak with our appraisal firm at the uh, pre meeting I'm meeting. Great. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Yeah. Appreciate you. That concludes our public comment section. The next item on the agenda is financial matters. And we have got the uh, opportunity tonight to uh, consider the final resolution approving the plan uh, financing of the North Granville Senior Center. And tonight we've got our finance director, Mr. Steve McNally, and Bob Jesse. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and members of the board. My name is Bob Benson, lawyer at the firm called Sanford Holstein's analysis of Tulsa. And I've had the opportunity to serve as the county special outside lawyer bar officer for the Alliance well over 20 years. Tonight we're here for the final required action seniors. At the April 1 meeting, we had a required hearing and you've adopted a resolution in support of the financing and, and the county's application to the local government. We're now asking the county to adopt the final resolution, the board will adopt the final resolution. And this resolution formally approves the financing proposal which we discussed at the last meeting, approves the substantially final financing documents that were in the packet, and then authorizes everything to close it. We expect routine approval from the local government commission, the state, state treasurer policy, to take the all the government at their meeting in early May, and we expect to close the financing by the middle of May. We spend that money. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, the action we're looking for tonight is, as shown on the agenda, is to approve the resolution. Thank you for coming tonight. Does the board have any questions? We've got the recommendation from our, our council, as well as the county manager and the finance uh, officer to recommend that the board adopt the attached resolution in support of the financing in the form presented. Look, Sam, on page eight. Sam, I'll move the resolution. Uh, the Second motion, Mr. Chair. Yeah, a motion by Commissioner Jay, seconded by Commissioner Pozer. Are there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for coming out tonight. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we've got our emergency communication matter, and we've got the Bicom Tower lease. Find that on your board packet at page 117. We've got Mr. Trent Brummett here this evening, our 911 emergency communications director. The purpose tonight of the approval is to get approval of a new lease agreement with the Bicom system for the use of their tower. This acts as our primary paving site, so our EMS courtesy call. Prior to the lease, the BICOM system previously, excuse me, was executed in 2005, although it was still active as a year-to-year -year contract, it was still not that scheduled to update this lease agreement. The county attorney's office updated the lease with new terms and conditions, which is attached to this agreement. Funding is included in the next fiscal year power lease fund and my recommendation is recommended the approval of the new power police for the BICOM system for fiscal year 24 25. That the board authorizes candidate to the execute the police in the final option. Further presentation by our emergency communications director. Is there any questions? We've got a recommendation. Just needs to say this is a critical piece of your uh, management infrastructure. So that's so we've got the recommendation of our emergency communications director, Trent Brummett, um, as well as our um, county manager um, to approve the new tower lease for BICOM systems starting the school year 24-25. there any comments from our attorney or commissioner, or county manager? Good? Yeah. Okay. All right. I make a motion we approve as recommended. Second. We've got a motion by Commissioner May, seconded by Commissioner Gooch. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Say uh, by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Like saying? Motion carries. Thank you. This week, everybody doesn't do a nap telecommunicator week. So we will be celebrating all week like I'll get up at three o'clock back to thank you. So just remember those that behind the scenes answering those phone calls and getting the call. Go through these power systems. Thank you for Thank you. Appreciate you being here tonight.
Next up, we've got some tax mem uh, matters, which is the adoption of our neighborhood adjustment factors. Finding this information on page one. And we've got Ms. Jimmy Short coming to the podium. Good evening, Chair. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I'm here at the house. The um, adoption of the adjustment, the negative adjustment factors that was, uh, we all know, April 1, so at 7 p.m. at the public hearing. Um, however, we also um, had the schedule values left out in, at the tax office for the public to read and on our website for inspection. And today, the North Carolina Department of Revenue email assessment ratio study. Our median, median is a 96.76. Weighted ratio is at 100%. So, with this study, it proves that a lot of those methods were pretty spot on. Um, so, I'm here today to uh, recommend approving the adoption. 2024 neighborhood adjustment factors that we use to determine fair market value. Does the board have any questions? So just as a, a refresh, we um, realized there was an error in our um, neighborhood adjustment factor and we had a second public hearing in regards to this matter. Here tonight we are um, gathered tonight to accept the newly listed um, neighborhood factor. And Ms. Short, our administrator, mentioned about the uh, letter from the state stating that we were uh, within compliance at 96.76. If you were above 90% um, for sales ratio calculations, I think you get a good to go. And if you're below 90% in your um, factor, you get a don't go. And at 96.76, we are well firmly planted in the go category. So we are on the go. At, uh, our math is correct. Uh, even though we did have a slight uh, error in our um, copy paste cut method um, for that neighbor, neighborhood adjustment factor, but we have corrected that since. So these, we, these, these are the new figures. Yes, sir. Okay. So the tax administrator recommends approving the adopted uh, 2024 20, neighborhood adjustment factors that have been used to determine the fair market value. And again, check behind by the state with a 96.76% ratio. Could you, could you repeat that? I could not hear it. So I'll, I'll restate that if the state finds that you're under 90% of your targeted values, that they tell you you got to stop and redo the math. But because we are like pretty darn close, we're only 4% ish. 3%, 3% and a quarter, 3% off on our math that the state has authorized us to move forward. That sum it up pretty closely. Okay, so we need a motion to accept our tax administrator's recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the straightforwardness and the openness on this matter. And having said that, I move that we approve the recommendation from our work. Administrator. I'll second it. We got a motion from Commissioner Cozart, seconded by Commissioner Wilford. Are there any questions on the motions? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like so. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next, we've got a uh, project management area. It includes uh, Triangle North, Granville Business Park, Water Service Infrastructure. And Mr. Stewart Phillips is coming forward. Thank you. Good evening, Scott. Thank you, Chairman, Chairman, Brown County Commissioners. This is a considerable. It's considered awarding the Enterprise Construction Services contract needed for the construction of the water service infrastructure for the Granville Business Park. Um, McGill and Associates re engaged in August 2023 to complete the design and the bid documents. In your name, Ray, we remember we started this project in about 2019 uh, and finished up the initial design in about 2021. So we re engaged to get the bid documents done once we had secured financing for the project. The design consists of approximately 7,500 linear feet of 16 inch blue main connecting the Oxford system at the intersection of US 158 and Tab Creek Road. The infrastructure will run along the right of the way of Tabs Creek and will drive. The system design will provide service for phase one of the park as well as the future parks expansion. Properties along Tabs Creek Road will have the ability to be serviced by public water with this infrastructure as well. On April 5th, 2024, five competitive proposals were submitted to Granville County with the lowest response of bid offered by Park Construction in North Carolina. After the certified bid tabulation along with recommendations of work from McGill and Associates is attached within your agenda. Um, this procurement procedure and subsequent request complies with Section 1 for all bids or purchasing the policy manual. Funding is available as a project ordinance. And a recommendation of uh, the ground can recommend the uh, director in conjunction with the deal so it just recommends the rules of unified construction contract upon construction for amount to include the base bill bid of one million seven hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred and forty six and the ad bulk net for use of the pipe for two hundred and fifty-eight thousand four hundred and ninety-three so one million nine hundred and seventy-five thousand four hundred and thirty-nine dollars. And authorized the county to the pilot contract the county manager contract document as well. We also recommend a unit a contingency of ninety-eight thousand dollars or five percent of the construction value of the community associated with change requests. The board have any answering questions for the board. Board, you've heard the uh, recommendation. Is there any questions of uh, Mr. Phillips? Scott, a couple of qu one question on that. You mentioned that the residents on Ash Creek would have access to tap on the water line. Is that correct? Yeah, we provide the taps on the Ash Creek on the property there. You have to walk in the city of Oxford, give the meter set. And that would just involve the water, no sewage. A little water. And that wouldn't affect any type of annexation at that also. But that needs to be worked out. With the citizens and the, if they're interested, the city of Oxford. That's correct. Thank you. Is there any type of system development fee attached to tapping into the, this line by residents? No. So it's just kind of free to tap into it. To the Oxford line, yes. We're just allowing it, right? We're, we're just allowing it. We just want to put it. We're not, we're not in charge of that. It, we just they have to follow out your rules. It's once the line is installed, it's going to get a lot of the city of Austin. Yeah. 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 Then, then it's gonna be. A, is there gonna be a charge to see if they want to tap tap on later? I think taps will be provided during the initial construction. It'll go to the property right away line, 
they'll work with the city of Austin to have the meter installed and they'll have to get their city collateral run through the meter to their home. I'm sure there's going to be a fee involved in the city of Austin metering. Right. And what well, we're here to, tonight to say that we have no problem with anybody hooking onto that line. So as far as the city of Oxford, once they accept that line, it'll be theirs. And if there's tap fees associated with it, it'll be their, their issue. That's correct. Right. Right. Any other questions of Mr. Phillips? You've got their recommendation before you. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion we approve. I second the motion. We got a motion by Commissioner May, seconded by uh, Commissioner Kozar to accept our County Development Director Services uh, in, co in conjunction with McGill and Associates recommendation awarding the unit price construction contract to Park um, Construction of North Carolina for the amount included in the base bid alternate one totaling one million nine hundred seventy five thousand four hundred and thirty nine dollars. And authorize the county manager and county attorney to finalize the contract and execute the documents. Any further questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Scott. Um, Mr. Chair, yes. My ask the county manager a question, a related, unrelated to this vote, but related to our training. Fire away. Uh, Drew, for our conversation, can you just kind of go over some potential grants that we have have received and then potential to receive to um, pay for some of the costs that we're incurring? Sure. So uh, initially, commissioners set aside a significant portion of the ARPA funding that the county got to, to help make sure that we had sufficient funding in place to install water and sewer uh, infrastructure in the park. Uh, subsequent to that, we have received a $1 million allocation from the state legislature to help facilitate that installation. We were recently notified uh, less than a month ago from Congressman Rashid's office that we've received just under a million dollars in community project funding from her office uh, through that congressional process, also for water and sewer expansion. Uh, and we are a I guess we could call it a semi-finalist in a site selection readiness uh, grant program that would also um, give us access to a lot of different forms of assistance from the state and that will help develop that site. So I feel good about where we are and the kinds of additional sources of funding that we've been able to track down and, and put in place for further development of the project. Thank you. I do think it's important that um, that people understand or they were pursuing any and all means to have this supported by grants and, and funding, not from directly from the taxpayer. And, uh, and again, another reason why we pursued a, a grant writer on the shared cost. Thank you. Great point, Commissioner Mann. And we've also on this project, we, you know, not only is a sale pending, but we've also got the um, our partnership with uh, BGCC and the um, building that's going in there. And um, what was the number on that one? I think they got them. Advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing. Yeah. 11.5. So lots of moving parts, lots of numbers to keep up with, but a great refresher as to all the exciting things happening at Triangle North. Fine. Yes. So our next <clears throat> item is uh, appointments, and we've got a walk in on this one as well as the one that's on the agenda printed is the Granville County Board of Adjustments. You'll find this number uh, on page 158. Uh, we've got the um, Appointments, reappointments of the Granville County Board of Adjustments. We've got the background and the terms of uh, Jimmy Williams, District 3, John Frank, District 6, John Wombush, District 7, and D uh, D Doris Lyons, District 4, alternate expire in April. So if we can take them in rank order, I suppose. So District 3. I need to have that held on to this evening, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, if you'll take mine. Uh, yes. Uh, in regards to, sorry, in, in regards to District 6. Uh, a motion that we appoint uh, John Frank to fill the term of uh, member of the Board of 
I lost my point. Um, adjustments. adjustments. Thank you. Sacristan. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, we'll go to the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed likewise. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. District 7. I'd like to hold that. I haven't had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Windridge. Okay, District 4. We went out of order, but I'm reading it as we went. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recommend the reappointment of Dolores Lyon. Second. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Cozart and seconded by Commissioner Wilford to appoint uh, Ms. Lyons as the alternate. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, like coming with here. All right, and our walk in item is the um, Senior Services Board. Uh, Commissioner Hinman, I believe you've got an appointment to make on that district three. I am very excited to finally have someone to put in there. I would like to appoint Miss Cynthia Griffin to the um, district three's seat for on the Senior Citizen Board. Right. We've got a motion by Commissioner Hinman and seconded by Commissioner Jay to appoint. Ms. Griffin to the Senior Services Advisory Committee. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like saying, motion carried. Perfect. Next item, we've got our county manager's reports. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, two quick items and a slightly longer item. Uh, first quick item is just, um, uh, and I see that Jason Falls, our environmental services director, has has come in yet another meeting to attend uh, first thing this evening. Uh, but just to recognize that our employees will be participating in a spring litter sweep in a few weeks, um, as as they do pretty much every year, and appreciate uh, Mr. Falls organizing that event and the employees participating. Second item is just to reiterate. Uh, the point that our tax administrator raised about the recent communication from the Department of Revenue indicating that uh, our reassessment of property values, uh, as noted, was on target and is on target. Uh, again, that doesn't mean that every single property is at a thousand percent right, uh, sort of right on top of market value and still encourage people who have questions to contact the tax office and make sure that that everything is correct, but but broadly speaking, looking across all of those properties that have been reassessed and looking at um, qualifying sales over the past year or so, that, that they believe that our reassessed values are right on top of the market value. Third item that I wanted to speak to this evening uh, has to do with um, actually another item that was on the consent agenda. Within that budget amendment, uh, you all approved a million dollars from uh, kind of a dated uh, corner of assigned fund balance to our final North Capital Project. The purpose of that, as I communicated to you last week, uh, was to put together a $1.5 million cash bond, uh, the purpose of which is to ensure for NCDOT's purposes that we have sufficient funding set aside to bring that road in Triangle North Business Park up to DOT standards following construction, right? They, they would, generally speaking, uh, they want to have a road brought up to their standards before they bring it on to uh, their road network, but they understand that we have a bunch of construction coming our way in the next couple of years and it doesn't make sense to fix the road only to have it torn up by construction. So the option they've offered us is for the county to set aside $1.5 million in cash bond uh, for that purpose. And uh, I think about here, I'm gonna hand this over to the county attorney to talk about um, the board's approval for, for a particular vehicle for carrying that cash bond. So we're just seeking authority for the county manager and I to work out a you know, cash escrow agreement to allow uh, those funds to be set aside for those purposes. Um, they wouldn't be appropriated for those purposes board actually authorized it. The purpose of it is the same as it is with the private developer to make sure that before any further development or approval is issued um, for that site related to the roads, that the roads be brought up to DOT standards. And in this case, that would only be done after the construction work was contemplated as completed. We don't want to destroy the roads by having construction traffic go over them. So we're just asking that the board authorize 
the county manager now to move forward with uh, securing an appropriate cash escrow. Can I ask a question? We, we've already voted on this in the consent, yes? I'm sorry? We've already voted on this. You, so you voted on this budget amendment, but you haven't actually authorized him okay. to subject those funds to being set aside for that purpose. Two funds. I the way I'm intending to do it that is a county in the past is uh, actually tell those um, four developers. We generally moved away from that and asked to be held with the title company, but if it will fit within the um, within the confines of the ordinance, uh, then we will have them held um, in a designated fund by the county for that purpose. If, it, if, if it's not, then um, I would recommend that it be one of the title companies like the uh, Metro Title or Investors Title and the Borders Funds and Esther. We would ask it to be held uh, in, in, so in, in, in an interest area. Yeah. Um, Does any members of the board have any questions about this? So, if you will, Jim, restate the um, the motion that you're looking for for us to have. Um, uh, to, to authorize the county manager to utilize the cash escrow arrangement for the funds, um, through the one point five million dollars necessary to um, to bond approval of the subdivision road to put an interest bearing account for such time as the board authorizes further disperse. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second, and a motion by Commissioner Wilford, seconded by. Mr. Gooch to accept their county record county attorney's recommendation on the um, bond for Triangle North Road improvements. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Motion uh, carries. Thank you. Is that the last one for you? Yep. All right. Next, we'll move on to our county's attorney's report. Do you have anything additional? Yeah, make it a second. All right. We've got. Uh, presentations by board members. Uh, District 2, Commissioner Wilfer. Got this tonight, Mr. Chairman. Three, Commissioner Hemmond. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to um, again talk about it. This last week we went to um, to GSS for the when they dedicated the pinwheels uh, to show the abused children in Granville County. Um, it was hard. But, um, and it's going to be hard because we know that these pinwheels, set, you know, mean the children that have been um, abused in Granville County. Um, so, but it was very awesome to get to go do that, even though we were trying to do it in the rain. So thank you very much for that. And that's all my report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Henman. Commissioner Kozart. Just one brief thing, Mr. Chairman. I I'll ask uh, Ms. Weary to send out a note announcing this, but there will be a, a child care forum on April 30th, and the purpose is to um, share information primarily uh, to those who would like to start a child care center, and then the other part will be related to support for existing child care centers. I will send a flyer and ask Ms. Deborah. She sent it to all the board, and if anyone can make it, I would love to see you. This is one in a series of uh, Representative Sossaman's um, forms. He's had a number of those, and I've attended several. But this is one that he's also helping to promote through bringing state representatives in to share about the topic. Yes, sir. It's how, you know, you don't realize you always hear about food deserts, but you don't think about the child care industry and how incredibly important it is to our workforce. Um, and that uh, we definitely do have a shortage of um, child certified child care facilities in our region. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner May? Yes, thank you. Um, sometime um, soon after we finish our budget amendment for this coming year, uh, Commissioner Karen and I will be working uh, with the board on a uh, proposal for a countywide uh, litter uh, program that we'll be discussing uh, in more detail as we develop it with more detail. Uh, but uh, we'll be doing that. In addition, uh, I have talked to uh, Mr. McConnell with the, uh, the hospital, Granville Health Systems, the county manager, and Commissioner Karen, 
and we engaged uh, began engaging with Senator uh, Dillis and Senator Bud's office in regards to some cooperative um, interaction in regards to our EMS and how they can help us in regards to the resource uh, that is the amount of resources being used to uh, meet the medical needs at uh, at uh, FCI Butner at the same time making sure that our resources are sustained here in the county and how we can have a, a, a more enriched um, a partnership uh, that a uh, they're good partners to uh, our EMS system but at the same time as uh, we believe that uh, based on the volume and the impact that it has on our EMS system that there's ways that we can work with them to um, bring about some uh, further uh, understanding and agreements maybe uh, of resources. So uh, that'll be a key. Thank you. Great. And as uh, we heard at the top of our, well, somewhere between our, our Jason Falls is here and we've got the state NCDOT's litter sweep is uh, campaign is April 13th through 27th. And we will as a county be mounting our employee uh, litter sweep campaign here. So I thank you for those remarks. So Mr. Gooch. Yes, thank you. Um, I attended the pinwheel event and it was, it, for me, it was very emotional. And it's, we don't realize how fortunate we were when we grew up in the households we, we grew up in. And just realizing what kids are facing. And it's not of their own doing. They have no control. On a uh, different note, I'd like to remind everyone that May is uh, May is coming up, and May is our Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. And as most of you know, that's I ride as much as I have the opportunity to, and uh, just want to make sure everyone watches out and. Trying to run over anybody on a motorcycle, especially me. Thank you. <laughs> sure, Jay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of things. Uh, first thing, last week, uh, Fox and Van Scrammer, uh, with partnership, we've been having a van for wheelchair uh, students and adults to take it anywhere. They need it for their programs and whatever. Uh, so we unwrapped it last, uh, last, I think last Wednesday, last Wednesday at Band Scramble. And uh, also, just like to say that uh, Russ, uh, last Thursday, I believe it was, we had a bad wreck at. Hampton Ball. Uh, if I can, if you can give me some help with this and get some lights, uh, uh, stop sign or some level of, I mean, uh, some level of help about, about Kenton Ball. It was a serious wreck of that, uh, last, last Thursday. And also, uh, Jason, DOT did a wonderful job, 96 look beautiful. You come down 96, uh, they picked up the trash before they mowed it, and they did a great job mowing it, and it looked beautiful. So kudos for that. Uh, and they, the, the last thing was we met with a uh, crew came from uh, Halifax County commissioners and, and, and then uh, the sheriff came last Friday, and took them out and wanted to see our law enforcement center and our uh, and and jail. Uh, it was a great, uh, it was a good time. They was in the same boat that we was in years ago, trying to build. Some said, "Let's build, just build the detention center," and they said. And you need to you need the sheriff station too. So why don't you just build it all at one time? So they brought them all up here to look at our deal. They were uh, law enforcement center. They were very impressed. So, Mr. Chair, I got to ask Mr. J a question. Okay. Um, as you know, I'm 
I'm hot to trot for a southern uh, uh, cart um, transit here. Um, did Henderson fund that carts program? No, Henderson didn't fund that cart program. So that 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 was through. Uh, uh, I think it was a grant that we went through through Van Scrammer and Cox signed together. And so again, not Van Scrammer. I, I mean, not Van, not Van County. Yeah. So it's, it's for Grammar County for everybody, all the, the regional. So does that mean the transportation is going to be for all everyone, not just Henderson? Right, everybody. Okay, and so I, I misunderstood. You can see it at Walmart parking lot. Okay, but it's gonna be it gonna be a band it gonna be a uh, band scramble cup, uh, van, uh, van wheelchair van. They can go up in there and get okay. computers, everything. All right. Mike's even see it. Got it. Got it. I'm good. Good. I misunderstood okay. it. So thank you. No, it's, no, it's all it's for five county region. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate you um, handling the. Uh, the visitor visiting dignitaries from Halifax. Uh, I know at this board, at least a good portion of this board uh, went to Bladen County when we were looking at building our law enforcement center. Um, and, uh, I know that uh, the one big takeaway we took from that was that we needed to have uh, the solar uh, availability in our 99 center so that we wouldn't have our folks suffering from non 24. Um, being in a closed building and not knowing if it was daytime, nighttime, raining or sunny outside. So I uh, appreciate you going to that to uh, receive those folks. But uh, good things happening here in Granville County. And, uh, appreciate the uh, community coming out tonight. If you were able to take part in our um, information session, that's awesome. If not, we've got uh, those folks at your disposable disposal anytime. Just call our um, tax administrator. The administrators available on our website and they will be happy to talk to you. Mr. May, you look weird if you had a question. No? Yeah. Uh, it, county manager, do we have an item for closed session? We, we do. I was getting to that. Yeah. So at, uh, as we close out the uh, commissioner presentations, um, we've got any other matters to come before this board? Are there any other matters? We do have a need for a closed session as allowed by general statute 143-318.114A4 for economic development. Which is the time that we pack it on page 163. I'll make that motion if we can have a five minute bio break. So we will absolutely have a, a double that 10 minute bio break. Um, but we will um, entertain a motion by Commissioner Hinman. Set. Go into closed session. We got a motion with Commissioner Hinman, seconded by Commissioner Wilford, to go into executive session following a after a 10 minute bio break. That's for attorney client privilege and personnel. Attorney client privilege and personnel. Okay. As well, in addition to the economic development, does the board anticipate conducting any business when we come back? No? Okay. So we uh, probably will not conduct any business when we come back in the general session. So we'll stand at recess. Coming out. Oh, don't leave. Oh, so Okay, we're back in regular session at 9.38. And any further business? Seeing none, motion to adjourn. So moved. Very good. That motion by Commissioner Will. Third, second, by Commissioner All those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion to adjourn. We took the